Well, cartel is a form of, of coordination, could be explicit or tacit, between competitors, which is really aimed at reducing competition to the detriment of the consumer. And that could be by increasing prices, reducing volume, which in fact is a shorthand for in fact increasing prices by putting less on the market, by tampering with, with bids, private bids, public bids, public tenders. Uh, could be market sharing. I take France, you take the UK, and we don't start competing like hell in each other's territory. Or in fact also information sharing. Thinking and talking about future prices, future volumes, future strategies is deemed part of a cartel. Well, the cartel notion has become so broad that it encompasses practices that are indeed pitch black and are perceived by pitch black by anybody in the business. The smoke-filled room, the hotel room, which is booked in the name of somebody's wife, where you basically come together and agree on prices or start reducing volumes, that is being perceived by everybody as a cartel and deserves the label of cartel. But by the same token, there are practices now that are being labeled in legal terms as cartels that are not perceived as such by business. For instance, information sharing. And again, information sharing could as quickly as just sharing future price lists uh, amount to a cartel. And, and I suspect that many people in business, certainly if there's a sort of standard practice along those lines of sharing that sort of information, would not readily label this as being cartel behavior of the same type as what happened in the smoke-filled room. Well, competition is in the first place trying to serve the consumer. It's a very much a consumer-driven legislation. The bottom line really is to get the best product in terms of quality at the best price to the consumer. And, and that is being defended from various angles by competition law uh, in a very, very uh, aggressive manner. It's indeed an area where, where there is a lot of case law, a lot of literature, but not so much black letter law. And that's one of the benefits, of course, of the book. It, it, it tries to fill a gap. Uh, you would have to read through all the cases, you would have to go through the literature to have a proper understanding as to what is, what is workable, what is not workable, how the procedure works. We are really, if we look at cartels, looking at one provision in the treaty, Article 101, which is you know, phrased in very general terms and from which you can hardly distill anything concrete in terms of what you can do or cannot do. It's the same provision that would also deal with distribution agreements, just to set a scene. And therefore, it's case law and literature that calls the shots. Well, judging by the number of cases which come, come out, both at the EU level and the national level, in fact it's a global phenomenon, uh, in the meantime authorities across the globe are attacking these cases. Well, judging by that, by that track record, there must be many, and because all of them have a pretty complete docket filled with cartel cases. Well, the start of a cartel case is very often linked to a particular company discovering the conduct of its employees and going in, confessing. And that is called a leniency program. It's a program whereby a company has the ability to go in, confess, and in return, if it is the first one in, to get a zero fine. And if you look at a track record of the European Commission, you'll see that the vast majority of the cases are really started by means of a confession. As far as the party confessing is concerned, they have a duty of full cooperation. So they will have to support the authority throughout by giving evidence, that could be oral evidence, written evidence, throughout the process to make sure the authority can bring its case. And then it's a matter of fact-finding. You know, where do I find the evidence as an authority to bring the case, to be able to condemn the companies? And apart from the leniency, the one confessing, you also have other tools, such as dawn rates. As an authority, you're allowed to knock at the door at 8, 8.30 in the morning of a company, go in unannounced, ransack the office, look at the evidence, look at the files, look at the emails, look at the SMSs on the mobile phones and gather evidence. And finally, you can also issue requests, and requests for information, which are a letter sent out by the authority accompanied by a questionnaire, which you are supposed to answer and to provide the information on. Well, judging by the fines they impose, they take them tremendously serious. They see them as the you know, ultimate attack on consumer benefit, consumer welfare. And, and that is translated into extremely high fines, which are being imposed on those participating in the cartel. 